All right, welcome back to part two of my Beatles vinyl collection. And these records are going to be from kind of Meet the Beatles, second album, era, through A Hard Day's Night, and some miscellaneous stuff at the end. And it's going to be the second part of my series. And I'm just going to start showing some records here to save some time. And I probably won't show a whole lot of records in a record label if they're kind of common U.S. records, unless there's some variation I like to talk about. If it's some foreign press or something, I'll show you guys the label. The first one here is Meet the Beatles in Stereo. This one's in very nice condition. And top it off, it is a very first pressing because it does not have the BMI credits or any credits on the label. So that's how you can tell a very first pressing. And these are going to be a little bit more expensive. So if you go to a record store, garage sale, and you notice that there's a couple Beatles albums there, and this one is here, it's always take a always a worth checking to see if it doesn't have the credits to make a very first pressing. It'll be a little bit more valuable if the seller doesn't catch it. So I got another with the Beatles. This one's just a regular pressing with all the credits and everything. These were released in 1964, and this one is a Scranton pressing. And I'll show you this one because it has the credits real quick. Let's see. It has the uh, ASCAP credits and the BMI credits. So we learned something today. I have a few Meet the Beatles, so we got a couple more. So here's another one. This one's an Indianapolis, Indianapolis pressing. So this is why I have this one and the other ones because they're different pressings. And my last Meet the Beatles is kind of a. I didn't quite find this on Discogs what particular pressing it is, but it was different from all the other ones, so. It was different. Uh, I couldn't really find where uh, where this one was pressed at. So this one's original, 1964. I just couldn't find the pressing plant. Okay. So this one is an interesting one. It's from Canada. Beatles Twist and Shout, their second album released in Canada, even though it has Please Please Me songs. Or no, no, it doesn't. My bad. It has some different songs on here that, yeah, you'll find out from Long Tall Sally and the second album coming up soon. So, this is on the regular Capitol, Canadian Capitol, and this has the uh, original inner sleeve there. Also released in 1964 on the 6000 series. Alright, so now we got the Beatles' second album, U.S. Pressing. 1964. It's also a Scranton pressing. Probably seen this tons of time. There's the label. Has original blue inner sleeve as well. And this one is the same thing, but it is in stereo. The other one was in mono. So, yeah, this one's also a Los Angeles pressing as well. little bit different one here. It is the Beatles' second album, but this one is from Germany. This was also giving to uh, U.S. soldiers uh, that were stationed in Germany, as long as uh, Great Britain soldiers as well, uh, based in West Germany. This was released in 1964 on the white, gold, and red Odeon label. And the, uh, the back is pretty beat up, but Pretty hard to find. The back looks like the Beatles' second album from the U.S. pressings. So, okay. All right. So here we go. The long toss alley. The Beatles' third album released in Canada, but it looks like the Beatles' second album in the United States because, yeah, just happened like that in Canada instead. So this was released in 1964 as well. 
and is a first pressing. And there's the Canadian label there. And I also have another Long Tall Sally. This one is a later, later pressing from 1978. It's on the, uh, I believe, the purple capital label here. Yep, there you go. And this album contains both true stereo and mono cuts, I believe I read from the notes. And uh, if you see these things up here, these are on the uh, protective sleeve, and they're just kind of my notes on what each album is in terms of pressing, release dates, and anything, you kind of something special about each record kind of thing. Okay. So this one is, we're on to A Hard Day's Night now, my UK first pressing of A Hard Day's Night. This one is in mono. And there's the label. Show you the back here. And this is a first pressing because the uh, label has chubby, <laughs> chubbier font compared to other pressings that are a little bit skinnier. So I'll show you the label here. And also released in 1964. And I just need one more record in my collection to complete first pressings of all the UK albums, and that would be Rubber Soul. In my previous video, I showed a third pressing of Please Please Me. i kind of counting that as complete for now until I save enough money to buy a first pressing in the uh, black and gold label. So, next one, we got Another Hard Day's Night. And this one is from South Africa. Similar cover, the back's a little bit different, got some credits down below, and it came with this weird kind of inner sleeve, but it's on the old style label, but in black and silver, so that's kind of cool. This one's also in mono. Alright, next up we got a, another Hard Day's Night. And this is from that 1995 series on that purple label there. And, um, yeah, so this was the 1995 series for where Capital, Parfum, and Apple were all credited here. Okay. Alright, so here is the French version of A Hard Day's Night. This one is not an original pressing, unfortunately. This one's from 1974. It's got a little bit of damage there. But I like the cover, and the label is on a, a light blue Odeon label there. That one has a sticker on it, so I'll show you this one. This side, side two. This one was released in 1964, and this one is in stereo. Okay. So now we go to Germany, and this is a first pressing in mono of the Beatles' Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. And this one's pretty, pretty fragile. There's the back. It looks nice. I like the pictures down here. A little bit different. And this one's on the green Odeon label. If it was in stereo, I believe it would be in the white gold label. And all the mono ones, I believe, are in the, the green label here as shown. So, kind of some differences between mono and stereo. Also released in 1964. Alright, probably one of my nicest Hard Day's Night is from Japan, from their 20th anniversary series here. I'll show you. There's the Obi strip. And the nice thing about this comes with a few inserts, and it is on a nice red vinyl. So, this one's really nice. This came out in 1986. 
And I believe this is my last Hard Day's Night. It is, and it is just a 2012 reissue. Nothing special there. Next we go on to something new. We got a stereo first pressing. And there's the label. Scranton Pressing. 1964. And since I have a stereo, gotta get one in mono as well. Also a Scranton Pressing. Let's see. This one is also a, a another mono Scranton Pressing, but it has a different different number right here. This one is a three. Let's check the other one. The other one was a two. So it's just kind of even more specific of where this was specifically pressed and released, kind of. So, yeah. Bunch of different versions. Okay. So this is my German something new. This is a later reissue from 1977 on the light blue Odeon label. But very nice shape. There you go. And I like the back cover as well. Alright, so now we're getting on to some The Beatles Hard Day's Night from the Motion Picture Soundtrack. This one is a mono pressing from Rockaway on the United Artists label. Show that for you guys real quick. There you go. And I have a few different versions of this one. So this one is a mono press from 1964. This one's another mono pressing from 1964. Just different, uh, different pressing plan this was from. And this one is a Pittman pressing. This one is very, uh, very beat up, uh, but I got it for basically free. As you can see, it's a big tear there. It's written all over the cover and some water damage, but it was my first copy of this one. It was for free, so I just said, why not? So, pick that one up. And the next one is in stereo, and this one's a 1975 release on the tan label one of, probably one of the ugliest <laughs> united artist label it's <laughs> not the prettiest <laughs> but uh different pressing in stereo and this one's for another one in stereo from 1977 a little bit of a cooler label here it's on the uh sunray looking type label there so there's all the motion picture soundtracks. And this one is a Hard Day's Night instrumental version by George Martin. This was released in 1964. And is also on the United Artists label there. Alright, so these last few albums are not going to be a whole lot special, but they're just kind of some filler albums and things like that. Here's a Beatles story in mono. This one's an Indianapolis pressing. Released in 1964. And the next one I have is in stereo. But I believe this one's from 1968. I could be wrong. I couldn't find anything on Discogs. I made my own release. I think it's from 1968 because it has the subsidiarity of Capital Industries on the label in the blue rim text there. And I believe that means it's from 1968. Um, if anyone knows, please leave a comment. I would like to I would like to know the specific pressing of it. But it was a nice shape and uh, didn't pay a whole lot for it. And it was in stereo. So. That's all my Beatles stories. This one is the, the Mustangs play the Beatles songbook. So they just cover some Beatles songs on uh, some instrumental. This was from 1966. 
Alright, and here's kind of the more official Beatles song book here. <laughs> and this one is by the Holly Ridge Strings. This one is pretty much perfect condition in the shrink wrap still. When I first bought this, I didn't really know what it was. And um, I thought about like selling it or giving it back. But then I learned that there was a whole series of these that came out and I completed it. So I'm kind of grateful that I picked it up. Uh, this is a Scranton pressing from 1964. All right, so now we got rock and roll music from 1976. Um, I, I really enjoy this album a lot. Double album. Uh, it has good compilations of all their stuff, including some you know, rock and roll songs like Helter Skelter, Hey Bulldog, kind of my, I'm down, kind of my favorites that are kind of a little bit B-sides, as I guess you can say. So there's the Coca-Cola label there, Coca-Cola label, and it's a West Winchester pressing. I guess I'll show the gatefold real quick for those who don't know. Alright, got a nice gateful there, nice and reflective, pretty cool. Yeah, if you're looking for a kind of a starter, getting into the Beatles, and you just want to get some of their music that's not like their popular, like the Red and Blue albums, you'll get some different songs on this for sure. And I re recommend picking it up if you're kind of just starting collecting. Yeah, it has some interesting songs such as Bad Boy, which you don't really find a whole lot uh, often. And then, let's see. Got Dizzy Miss Lizzy. I'm Down. Hey Bulldog. Birthday. Stuff like that. Matchbox. So, yeah. Pretty interesting album. And then, in 1980, they released Rock and Roll Music Volume 1 and 2. So... These are the last two albums of these videos. They're on the green capital label there. And they're both from the Jacksonville pressing plant. And that is my first crate of five. And I hope you enjoy these videos. Again, if you have any questions, leave a comment on the video and I'll try to answer them the best I can. And yeah, love to hear from you guys. Thanks.